Hi. There we go. Sorry. Hi, this is Mary Ann McGalpin, and I'm going to um, do a tutorial on uh, what I call is a boho bracelet. And I'm going to flip my phone around and just make sure I'm being recorded. Yes. Okay. So let's flip my phone around and we're going to get started. So this is what we're going to be making. And you got a packet with the instructions in it. And it's pretty detailed. It gives you um, the configuration of each strand. And there's four strands of leather. And what we're using is a bead button, 0.5 millimeter leather, and these little packets of beads, which are labels one, two, three, four, which go back to the pictures. Here's figure one. I'll just open this up, bit two, three, and four. So let me put this up here so we can begin. All right, there we go. Let me see if I can get that light a little bit better. That light better. See if I put it right here. And I'll just, no, nope, that was perfect where I was. Okay. All right. So I'm going to open the leather. And listen, if you're having a hard time opening these little packets, just take a pair of scissors and cut right across and pop it out and get rid of that. Okay. So now I'm just going to leave this on the slide. So there's the picture of the bracelet. And here is uh, one that um, I, I did a recording this morning and of course it didn't record. So I'm hoping this one records and we will be perfect. So I'll put that right there. I'm going to take two, three and four and I'm going to pop them on the side and get them out of my way. So I'm only going to be dealing with packet one. So I'm going to open packet one. And I tried to make it as easy as I could for you. So now there's packet one. And if you go back to the flyer and you open it up on the first page, the picture of the um, bracelet is figure one. So I'm gonna put figure one right there. Hold it so I can use it. This figure, this figure one, okay. So I'm gonna take my leather and my button. Now I, I use two pieces of leather and I <laughs> cut them. I mean, I, I took them and I strung them through here and then I tied a knot. And I'm gonna tell you, um, this bracelet will probably make up to easily almost an eight inch bracelet. But if you need bigger than that, I'm gonna tell you right now, put another knot in right here. So just do an overhand knot, just like so. And just tie a knot and that'll put another, that'll make, give you the extra room that you need. I'm just gonna show you on this one, I did an extra knot at the end to give me more room in the bracelet. So you'll do the same thing with the other side. So I'm gonna take this out. And get started. <coughs> okay. All right, so let's get started. So on this figure, if you look at figure one, it shows us that we're using a red, an orange, and a yellow bead. And that's all the pat there is to that pattern. And we just repeat it and just keep putting it on. All right, so if I go over to my button, 
I'm just going to grab one strand. There's four strands. I'm only using one. And I'm going to leave my pattern at the top of my piece so I see what I'm doing. And I'm going to start. And you could put them in any order you want. If you want it red, yellow, and orange, by all means, do it. If you want to start with the yellow, start with the yellow. But that's my, that's my pattern. So I'm doing red. And I'm going to use the leather as a needle. Red, orange, and yellow. And I'm just going to keep doing it. Red, orange, oops, and yellow. Take one out of there. Okay. Red. Orange. And yellow. And then I want to just look at it periodically. I just want to make sure that I'm putting them on in order in my pattern, because I could have reversed one, uh, especially since I'm talking at the same time. Sometimes I'm not paying attention. And we have to do this like nine times. Now, if your wrist is smaller than like a seven, seven and a half, um, you might want to do, uh, if you have like a six inch wrist, you might want to do um, less than I put on. And I'll show you as I get enough on how it, it should look and how you can measure it. So it's red, orange, and yellow. Didn't we have a beautiful day today? Red, orange, and yellow. Red, orange, and yellow. And the reason I'm calling the, this little one orange, I mean, some people could say it's yellow also, but I have this yellow. So, it's whatever color you think it is. So it's red, orange, and yellow. And these, these just remind me so much of, um, you know, all your fall colors, which I love the fall. It's just, it's a fun time. So many, so many beautiful colors just a kaleidoscope of colors. I love colors. Okay, so I think I'm about halfway done. So I still got a lot of beads left and you will have extra beads. So I did this earlier and it didn't record. And these were all my extra beads. I stuck them all in one bag from my project. So that's a good chance you'll have extra beads. The other thing is once you decide to start, if you decide to make these, now these are um, bead buttons that I bought from my beading distributor. Um, but you could use a regular button as long as it has that shank with the hole in it, because you need to be able to pass the leather through it. Now you could possibly use a button that has two holes on the top. The problem is, I don't know if you could get both pieces of leather through it. So you're gonna have to check your leather. This is 0.5 millimeters. The other thing that I ran into is I ordered a one millimeter leather. And of course I ordered all the beads 
And when it came in, they, these littler beads wouldn't go on with the leather because it was too thick. So whatever you decide to do, I'm using 0.5 millimeter leather and leather is pretty strong. You know, you don't want to get it wet. Wet is not good. Um, but, and you know, take it off if you're going to take a shower or jump in the pool. But I also, um, I also store um, any, all my leather in, in, in bags. And you know, those little packets you get in with the vitamins and the, you know, sometimes you get them in with like appliances or whatever. There are those little silicone packets. Um, I pick them up, uh, I save them. And then I throw, I throw a piece in the bag with my leather because, you know, leather responds to um, your, the environment. And if there was moisture, you know, leather can get molding and stuff like that. And you don't want that to happen if you accidentally put it away. So I, I, I try to um, save those packets, you know, whenever you get something that they're in, I, I throw them in with my jewelry to uh, protect it, especially, you know, it's one thing if I was buying a piece of jewelry, but I'm making my jewelry. So it's got to last longer because, um, you know, it's, it's the art of, of you making it. Your blood, sweat, and tears went into it. and You just want to keep it protected as long as you can. So let me just take the bracelet off I'm wearing. I don't care. Okay. So. I think I'm almost done, but I'm thinking that I might need one more go around. So I'm just going to put this, hold it tight. And I'm going to bring my button up to and over. And my beads should be touching. And I don't want to make it tight because it's not a tight bracelet. Um, so I think that I can put in another set of beads. So I'm gonna do another one. So we're gonna do red, orange, and yellow. And I'm gonna just take it once again, make sure my beads are pushed up to my button and that's where I want to be. I just want to be touching. Oops, you can't say too good. I just want to be touching the button. See how my, that yellow bead by my thumb is almost touching the button. Um, so once I get that, I'm going to just take these extra beads and I'm going to push them off to the side. And what I tend to do with my extra beads so that they don't interfere with the rest of my beads is I just grab one of the packets that they came in or you can put them in a little bowl. You could use a piece of um, felt to do your beads on if you don't have a beading mat. Um, and I just put them on the side, get them out of my way so that I don't inadvertently mix them with my next packet of beads, which they're different. This red here is different than this red here. So I'm gonna push it all the way down to my knot, make sure I'm right up against my knot. And I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna make it overhand, very simple overhand knot. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna pull it tight because I want those beads to be right up against the knot by the button. So I'm gonna work it so that my knot gets pushed down and see, I don't like where that one's sitting because I think there's going to be too much room. So I'm going to push it down with my thumb. And it's, it's not going down enough for me. So I'm going to just loosen it up and move this piece over. And now I'm going to try and tighten it down. There we go. That's better. See, it's real close to the button. And I'm going to make it tight. And I'm just going to use my thumb 
trying to do it so you can see it. To my fingernail, and I'm pushing it down. There you go. I mean, if you got a little bit of room in there, no one's going to know. So don't, don't make yourself crazy. See, look, I got a little bit of space. It's fine. All right. All right. The next one. So now you can take them in any order. I'm going to do them in order just so that I have it. Now, this is going to be my guide for how I want my other beads to sit next to it. So, you know, the other thing you could do is you could put a little clothespin on there too, if you're, you're worried. My mother's doing it at, at a, a table right next to us. Mom, get a clothespin if you don't, if you're a little behind me, all right? Okay, so let's do the next pattern. So let's do the next pattern. Can you go grab a clothespin outside? Okay, let me, let me take that one out. So you could just put the clothespin on here too to hold it. Just to hold it in place. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna need that. Okay. So now we're gonna do figure two. So let me get to figure two. And figure two is so it's three red, one white, one yellow, and one of this, this is a real orange. This is like a, a neon orange. One orange, a yellow, and a white. And that is my pattern. So I have that out there in front of me and I have it right here. I'm gonna take the next piece of leather and I'm gonna start my pattern. Um, and, and some people will divide these up and you are gonna use a lot more red than any of the other colors, but not a lot. They just look like a lot more cause they're right next to each other. So I'm gonna start with three red, one, two, three. About three is all I can put on at one particular point. And I'm push that down. And then I'm gonna do a white, a yellow, this beautiful orange who jumped around on my thing, a yellow and a white. And I'm gonna push it down and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So there's my three red, white, yellow, orange, yellow, white. This one's pretty easy, but when you have two oranges, that two different color oranges, it gets a little crazy. So let's start again. Three reds. A white. a yellow, an orange, a yellow, and a white. And I'm just gonna push it down and make sure it looks good. Now you can change this around. If you don't like my color choices, or you could throw the whole, all the bags on the thing and just make a mishmash of colors. Um, it'll come out beautiful because these colors are so alive. They just, they're just fun. So three yellow, three reds, a white. Oops, that orange and yellow doesn't look so good. I'm gonna get rid of you. A yellow, an orange, a yellow, and a white. Push that over. Do another one. So three reds. One, two, three. A white. A yellow.
an orange, a yellow, and the white. And I'm pushing it down. And you see, I've done like four patterns and I still have at least another two and a half patterns because I'm not gonna get three patterns. It's just not, I'm pretty close to being done here. So we're gonna do three red again. A white, a yellow, an orange, a yellow, and a white. And I'm still off. They're next to each other. I'm going to do another one. Three red. A white, a yellow, an orange, a yellow, and a white. And as you can see, I'm going to show you, I'm still going to be off, but I don't need a whole set. So if I take the two, oops, get out of there, push them out of the way and put them next to each other. To me, it looks like I need three more beads. So I'm just gonna put three red beads on. One, two, and three. And that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna push them over to the side and I will be putting them in my bag, that extra bag I have here that's labeled one. I'm just gonna put these extra beads in because I will need some of them for the fringe. And some of you are using almost all of them. So, oops, I shouldn't have sealed that. Okay. Now I gotta make another overhand knot. So I'm gonna push it down to the button and I'm gonna take my piece and I'm going to make an overhand knot. And I'm not making it crazy big because I want to be get really close to my beads. So I'm just gonna push it down, push it down, make sure these are, oh, now see, I just made the whole piece jump and that wasn't good because my knot jumped. So I'm gonna push it all the way down to make sure it's be all the way down to my knot, to the knot at the end of the button. And I'm gonna just use my thumb and my finger and I'm gonna push that knot down and use my, I use my thumb nail, which I don't have any nails, but just to push it down. And there we go, I got two on. Okay, we're gonna do another one. Like I said, it doesn't matter which order you're doing it in. So I'm gonna get the piece of leather, the next piece, and I'm gonna take number three. And I gotta figure out number three's pattern because I don't wanna fly blind here for myself. And I went through the effort of making it so that you guys could, it, be easy for you. So on this particular one, it's yellow, it's white, I'm sorry, it's orange, white, that neon yellow, that red, that brown, and then this neon orange. Those are my color choices. So I'm just gonna take my neon orange and put them over here. So they're separated from the rest of my pieces. And I'm gonna just take my regular orange and put them over here. 
just to separate them. So these will be light orange over here. And these are gonna be neon orange, all right? So I'll just call these orange and I'll call these light orange. And then of course we have the yellow, red, brown, white in the middle. Okay, so let's start our pattern. So we're gonna go with light orange, which is on my left. Then I'm gonna go with white. I'm gonna go with this neon yellow. Then I'm gonna go with red. And then I'm gonna go with this neon orange. Okay, so I push it all the way down. And there's my little pattern, which is just like what I have here. I have this reversed because it should look like this. So there we go. Okay, let's do it again. I'm gonna do light orange. And you know, if you're having a hard time putting the beads on, you can pick the bead up and just push it right through the hole. And then I'll do another one here, the yellow. I'm gonna push it right through the hole. Sometimes, if you hold it, it, it helps. And then we got a red, a brown, and this neon orange. And I'm gonna push it down. I'm gonna put this back on here. And I've got, oops, look at that. I missed the brown right here. So I'm gonna take this off. See, that's why you don't want to go too far ahead because before you look at your work, because if you do that, you may have to take the whole sleeve off and that's, just, that's a little bit more work. So there it is, that's my pattern. So let's try that again. <laughs> I don't, I, uh, so we got light orange, we got white, we got yellow. See, I got three on there. We got red. Come on. Red. Brown. And neon orange. And let's see how that looks if I did it right. So that's that pattern. So there it is. I did it twice now. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. So we've got light orange white and yellow. Then we've got red, brown, oops, and then this neon orange. And we'll do it again. We've got light orange over here. Oops, don't go. And if you have to trim off a tiny bit of this, Cut it at an angle. Just cut it at an angle with a pair of scissors. And only cut a little bit off. You see that? Okay. So what am I up to? I only got the light orange on. So I'm gonna do white, yellow, Red, oops, get on, brown, and this neon orange. And I'm about a third of the way done. <laughs> okay, so let's do some more. So we've got light orange. white, yellow, red, brown, and neon orange. We've got light orange, white, yellow, red, 
brown and neon orange. And I don't think that's enough, but I'm gonna measure because I'd rather be short and have to put more. Oh, definitely. I'm gonna need at least two more goes around. As you can see, I'm here and I need to be here. So let's do again. So it's going to be light orange, white, yellow, red. Give me a little red. Oops. Brown. And this neon orange. And I'm gonna do one more. So I've got light orange, white, yellow. Oh, my white fell off. White, yellow, red. And let's see how I'm at. Nope, I've got to get it on. Red, brown, and orange. I'm gonna do another one. So we've got yellow, white. I'm sorry, that was orange, white, and yellow. And let me see where I'm at. Not there yet. So I'm gonna push them all down. I think that I need to add. Oops, come over here. Okay. I need to add um, I think three more beads and I'm good. So I've got yellow. Red, brown, and orange. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a little knot in it. Overhand knot, same as we've been doing. And we wanna make sure it gets down to the, the bead. And we push it all the way down to the button on the other side, the beads. And I'm just pushing it over. However, it works for you. I had some people use a paper clip to hold the knot and pull on it. You don't want to pull too tight because this can break. All right. So these extra beads are going to go right here. Oh, I dropped a couple. Okay. So now I have one more strand to do. And this one has a really, really pretty pearlescent bead in it. And this is number four. Okay. So this one is a repetitive pattern. Again, I will just do number four, figure four. And I opened up bead, the four on the Plastic. Oh, okay, so let's start. So we've got a red, a white, a yellow, and this really pretty pearlescent bead. See that? Oops, a yellow, a white, and a red. And that is our pattern. Okay, so let's take the last piece of leather and we're gonna start. So it's red, white, ooh, two went on at once, yellow, and then this pearly color. I don't even know what that's called, but that is really pretty. Uh, yellow, white, and red. 
and I'm going to push that down. We're going to do a red, a white, a yellow, the pearl color, a yellow, a white, and a red. Let's see how we look. So I've got two of my pattern going right there. Let's, I'll do another three and then I'm gonna check it. So I've got a red, a white, a yellow, a pearl, a yellow, a white, and a red. I'm gonna do another one. It's a red. A white, a yellow, oops, a pearl, a yellow, a white, and a red. And that put on two more sections for me. So I'm going to push it down. Oh, yeah, I still have quite a ways to go. So let's do another section. Let's push them over so I can get at them. So it's a red, a white, come on, a yellow, a pearl, a yellow, a white. And a red. And I'm going to just push it down and see where I'm at. I think I've got to do two more. But I'm going to do one shy of the two more just because I'm not sure if I need a whole two. So it's red, white, yellow, pearl. yellow, a white, and a red. So let's just see where I'm at now. Oh yeah, so a one, two, three, uh, yeah, I gotta put the whole pattern on. So we got a red, a white, a yellow, a pearl, a yellow, and I'm just gonna double check it and see how I look. Uh, I think I can put on, let's put on another bead, a white, and I'll put a red on. And that should be, okay, so now let's just put a note a knot in it. I'm pushing it all the way down to my button. I'm going to put an overhand knot in. And I'm going to start to pull it. I want to keep it tight. I want to keep these tight and pull that knot nice and close. And I'm push it down to the bead. There we go. So now I'm gonna take all these extra beads and put them on the side because we're gonna use them in a few minutes. So now I'm gonna take all my bracelet pieces, my four components, I'm gonna grab them together, my little knots, and I'm gonna do an overhand knot. And when I pull this together, because I'm working with four strands, I wanna pull them at the same time together. Okay, so I wanna get them tight and make sure none are, are looser than others. And you can see I'm pushing them down to my beads. And I'm pushing them down, pushing them down, pushing them down, and then I'm gonna pull them tight. Now, the thing is, so that one's a little loose. 
I can loosen it up and try and pull that one a little tighter. I think I will do that. Sometimes if you have a little wall or something that you can hook underneath without damaging, you wanna make sure you're not gonna damage your leather because that would be a real waste. And I just wanna pull that one up tighter and then pull it all together tight. So let's see which one is, is the loosest. There we go. Now, if I bring this over, I'm good. My button, oops, you can't see it. Let me put my button, my piece right there and hope it stays in place. And I'm bringing my piece right over and I'm good. Now, if I needed more room and I already tied all my knots and I didn't wanna put more beads on, um, I'll just try in a second knot, just like that. And make sure you're keeping everything snug. And I'll put the second knot there. And if you need a third knot, put a third knot in. Whatever you need to make it. All right. So now I'm going to leave about an inch, roughly an inch between this knot and where I'm making the next knot. An overhand knot. And I want to roughly scope it out and leaving about an inch in between. And before I tighten it down, I'm going to take my button and I'm going to separate these, these four strands here. I'm going to separate two strands and two strands. Just like that. So I'm holding two strands in either hands and I'm going to take my button and my button's gonna slide through and it should fit right through without hanging up. And that's gonna be my bracelet. All right, so I know that that's pretty good. So now I'm gonna take it off. I wanna make sure it comes off as easy as it went on. Cause if I need a slight room, this is where I have to make my adjustment. So it's coming off and I'm good. So now I'm gonna use both fingers and keeping this together. And remember leather is going to stretch a little bit. I mean, it's thin leather, so it's not gonna stretch a lot, but it will stretch a little bit. And I'm, I'm of the opinion, I'd rather have something a little bit loose than a little bit tight. So I'm just gonna tighten down that knot and that's our clasp clasp. That's the part of the top. So if you tighten it down and it's a little too tight, stick your finger in, stretch it out a little bit, but taking your button and put it through just like that. And there we go. Now the fringe. So this is my fringe. I put either two or three pieces on each one. If I fill this all up with beads, it would be too stiff and it would stick out. And I don't like things to stick out. I, I like things to lay. So you can put two, you can put one bead on here. You don't have to put any beads. You could just make little knots at the end. You don't have to make knots, you could just cut it. But so all these extra little beads I have, I put them in a pile. Dump them all here. Oops. And there we go. Those are all my little beads. So I'm just gonna pick a couple of them out. These are all extra. So I'm gonna take one fringe and I'm gonna put, I, I think I'm gonna put a red one and a white one. And I'm gonna make a knot about an inch and a an inch or so down. I think an inch is plenty of space for the fringe. So I'm just gonna put my knot in 
and there's my so the knot's going to hold the beads from falling off so i'm going to pick another one i really like this neon orange and i like the neon yellow so i'm going to do those two and i'm going to try and make the knot and what you could, you know what you could do? So it makes it a little easier for you. Just make sure that's nice and tight and giving it about a quarter of an inch, cut it away from the knot. And that'll help you, oops, help you decide where, so that you can see how your fringe is gonna look. So I'm gonna do orange and yellow and I'll put another knot in, overhand knot. And I'm gonna put it, my knot as close as I can so that it's about the same place as the other one. And then I'm gonna tighten it up with my nail and leave it about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna cut it off. Then I'm gonna do another one. And the color choice is yours. So I really like these pearls. So I'll do a pearl and I'll do, I think this little red one would look really cute with it. All right. And I'm gonna do another overhand knot. And leaving it about an inch. I wanna do that. And I'm gonna cut it off. And then I gotta do one more. And I'm going to do a red and a yellow. Okay, I'm gonna do my last overhand knot. Push you all out of the way. And, and I think that's about the same. Yeah, it is. Pull it tight and cut it off. Piece of garbage. These little beads, um, I tell everybody, uh, especially with my classes, just save whatever extra beads you have because there might be, sometimes there's a little finding, a little piece of um, a crimp tube or a extra jump ring or something. Just hang on to them because if you're ever short in a class or you're ever you need to fix a piece of jewelry at home. These things come in handy. If you have an old bracelet you want to take apart and use some of these and get some new components and put it all together, that works too. Um, any saved old buttons that you have, as long as it has this little toggle piece on it, this little piece that, that the hole can go through, you can use it. There's nothing that says, yes, that is only a beading button. You can use any button for this. Um, you want to add different beads in here, you can. Um, in the fringe, I have a customer that she's always putting a, um, a diamond needle, not a diamond needle, a firefly in. And, you know, you, I would put it in the, in the fringe. Um, so you, you can do whatever you want. So I hope this um, was very helpful and that uh, you get to make lots of them because once you start, they're like really addicting. I think like when I, when I figured it out the first time, I think I made six just sitting there. I was grabbing whatever beads I had laying around um, and that's what I did. But thank you so much. And I hope to see you guys again soon. And once again, I am Marianne McAlpin and I hope you enjoyed this class. All right, bye-bye.